Let's now make our movable object. Instead of a boring old box, I'm going for a pile of junk. So over here in the sprites, I have created a sprite junk, which is 32 by 36. This is a little bit taller than the other objects in the game, because I'm going to leave just a little bit of space at the top. So when the sprite player is coming in from above, it looks like it's behind it and pushing the pile downward. To get that effect, however, I've had to offset a few things. So the origin point is at zero, a Y of four, and I've modified the mask by checking the manual setting and bringing the top down by four. So the collision mask is still 32 by 32, but the top part will be unaffected. And then I've created an object junk. This one is not solid because we're going to later have it move on to another object, but I've set the depth to a negative five. That way it will appear above the player in the way I mentioned. I've also set the parent to the object wall. We're not actually going to add events or actions to this object, so close it, and instead we will reopen the object player. So we'll set up our collision event, add event, collision, object, junk, and even though the junk has the wall as a parent, when we give it its own collision event, it overrides the collision event that the wall has, so everything in here will be separate, and the actions that we have in the object wall collision will not happen. And the first thing we need to do is make sure that when we start pushing this object, there is space behind it. In other words, there's no wall blocking it. So we can do that by coming over to Control, and in the questions we want this first one, check empty. And this will allow us to see if a position is free of collisions. We want this to apply to other, because we will be looking based upon the junk's position. We want the x to be x, and the y to be y, plus our object player dot v speed, which is a built-in property equivalent to the vertical speed. We also want this set only solid because the wall is solid. So what this is going to do is check to see if there is an empty space above or below depending on which way we are going to push the object. And that's determined for us by this vertical speed property. When the object player is coming downward, its vertical speed is positive because it's going a positive four in the downward direction. So the Y position of the object junk will be incremented by four. If the player is coming from the bottom, however, then its vertical speed is going negative. So this Y will actually be adding a negative four to it, which means that it will also go upward. So to get it to actually move, we can close this. And now we're going to set the Y position of the junk equal to that vertical speed. So come over to set variable. The variable will be Y, and we will set it to obj underscore player dot v speed and we need to check relative so if a position is available either plus or minus four pixels on its y-axis then it will move the plus or minus four pixels depending on which direction the player is going in let's close this and there's actually one more thing we should check for this collision free is only looking to see if there is a wall in the way but if there's another pile of junk in the way, we don't want that to pass through. We want that to stop as well and act like a wall. So in between these two actions, we're going to come over here and find the check object action and drag that in. And we're going to apply this to other. So the object junk is looking for this. The object is another object junk. We'll set our X to X, our Y to Y, plus obj underscore player dot v speed. And then we want to tick the not box because we are looking to see if there is not an object junk in that position. So click OK. And so if both of these are met, then the object junk will move and we can push it around the screen. So now let's set up the horizontal axis actions. We'll just go ahead and select all, copy, and paste. And in the bottom ones here, we'll now check and see if there is a collision free on the X plus OBJ 
underscore player dot h speed, which is the built-in property equivalent to the horizontal speed, and then on the y axis we only want y. Click OK, and we'll check and see if there is an object on the x plus obj underscore player dot h speed, and set this back to just y. Make sure to check not. And then we need to come to the set variable, change the variable to x, and give it h speed instead of v speed. We also need to make sure this is set to other because we want the object junk to move. And we need to make sure that happens with this other variable as well. Okay, so we can close the object player, and reopen the level, and I'm just going to place a few of our object junks around the room. So let's test. Okay, so I should be able to push the junk pile into the wall. It does not pass through the wall, so I'll push it down. I'll try and push this other junk pile into it. It doesn't move, but I should be able to push it all around in every direction. So now that we've got our movable objects, we need to have goals to move them onto. So we'll look at that next.